Hello YouTubers and welcome back to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel. Time for another paint review. Uh, probably one of the most frequently asked questions is for custom customizing action figures is what type of paint should I use? Uh, I think most of the customizers that have been doing this as long as I have probably started out with testers paint. Um, that's one of the like, I don't want to say pillars of the Pantheon, but it's, it's pretty close. Uh, a lot of screw up with that, um, paint when we were making models as kids before we got into customizing. Um, and it's not a really good paint. Um, it has a really shitty shelf life. It's not really easy to use. It doesn't thin down very well. Uh, it's easy to mistake, uh, they make an enamel and an uh, an acrylic and you should always use acrylic paints when you're customizing action figures you don't want to use uh, enamels because they won't dry on your figures um, and they they bottle their paints very similar so it's very easy to accidentally buy a bottle of enamel uh, thinking that it's the acrylic um, so I mean testers is not not the best paint to use uh, one of the paints that I picked up at a local hobby store where I live, close to where I lived when I first started customizing, because um, I was just trying anything and everything at that point in time, was a brand called Mr. Color. And uh, it's made by a company called Mr. Hobby. And it's huge in Japan. And uh, I haven't seen this stuff for probably probably 10 or 12 years at least, probably longer than that. Um, I was picking this stuff up at the time uh, because I had just started getting into more realistic military customs. I was still doing like O-Ring G.I. Joe figures, but I was trying to make them more realistic. And they have a fantastic range of colors. Uh, and this was at the point in time when I had tried, just tried Tamaya paint and didn't realize that Tamaya needs to be stirred and not shaken to be used well and it needs to be thinned down. Um, so I, I had tried Tamaya paint, wasn't happy with it at the time, and I picked this stuff up because it came in the similar pots and it had the similar realistic military color ranges. Um, and I really liked it at the time. Um, the thing was, it's, like I said, it's huge in Japan, and my hobby store stopped carrying it. They said they couldn't get it anymore because the company refused to do the paperwork to get it through customs, so they stopped importing it. Well, uh, one of the colors I like to use is a Tamaya paint, and that is one of the brands that I I use one of the four main brands of paint I use is Tamaya paint and I still highly recommend it. Again, it needs to be thinned down um, and it needs to be stirred and not shaken like other paints. Um, it is a bit more difficult to use. It's not a beginner level paint, but uh, the color range is fantastic. Um, but I use a color called sea blue instead of black because it's just slightly off black which allows me to do some dry brushing and some washes on it on black. Whereas if you go straight black, you can't do much with that except dry brush some white or some gray onto that. Um, but I'm out of it and the hobby store close to where I live closed down. And that was one of the two places here locally that I know of so far where I can get Tamaya paint. So I went to the other place today. They didn't have the, the color that I wanted in Tamaya, but I found the Mr. Color and I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen Mr. Color in forever. Let's pick some of this up. Uh, cause I need the color for, I need an off black for a custom. And I used it before. I loved it. It's nice to see it again. They had a um, limited selection of it. So it, it's, it seems like it's probably still not really easy to get. Um, so I picked it up and I thought, hey, you know, first thing, of course, let's run it through the airbrush. Because that is the on uh, one of the other nice things about the Tamaya paint is with just a little bit of thinner and a little bit of uh, accelerant, it goes through an airbrush like a dream. I absolutely love Tamaya paints through airbrushing, through an airbrush. So I'm like, yeah, 
let's try it. It's, it was a little thicker than Tamaya paint normally is. So, okay, I'll, I'll thin it down in the, in the airbrush a little bit. Well, uh, it didn't airbrush real well. I'm like, ah, okay. Some paints, they're not real airbrush friendly. That's fine. And then I tried to clean my airbrush. And the paint had turned into a state of matter that I hadn't seen before. Uh, the best way I can describe it is a flaky gel. Those are two states of matter that should not exist simultaneously together. But it did, and it gummed up my airbrush, something fierce. Um, it didn't ruin the airbrush, uh, although I ended up throwing that airbrush away because the nozzle broke, the inside nozzle broke in the barrel, um, which I had happened on another airbrush two days prior. Both airbrushes are about seven or uh, five to five, seven years old. So I'd gotten my money out of those airbrushes. Um, so I'm not too upset by it, but man, it made a mess out of that airbrush. Uh, I don't know how long this paint's been sitting around. Like I said, it was uh, difficult to get it a number of years ago. So I don't know if it's still difficult. I don't know how long this stuff's been sitting on the shelf. There's just no way to know if the fact, if this stuff was old, I double checked it to make sure that it wasn't an enamel paint, but it's not, it's acrylic. I still like the color. I still like the range that they have, but there are better options for you at this point in time. Um, 15 years ago, I would have highly recommended Mr. Color. I was really upset when I couldn't get it anymore. And now that I've seen it again and found it, found it and, um, Number one, I'm not going back to the hobby store where I picked it up from anyway, just because they've moved again and are carrying less paint than they did previously. So it's, to my is seems like it's fairly difficult paint to get uh, on top of Mr. Color's paint, which is even harder to get. So, I mean, chances of you actually finding Mr. Color's stuff um, is pretty slim. Uh, and one of the places that I've seen, I've seen a lot of customizers um, that live in Japan, uh, like the Gundam model makers. These guys go crazy for this stuff. Um, where else have I seen it? Magazines. One of the hobby stores that I used to go to up in Denver, they carry um, model magazines from Japan and see a lot of ads for Mr. Color, Mr. Hobby. Uh, I know Mr. Hobby has other products. I think they do brushes. I think they do sculpting materials. Um, I'm not real familiar with the line, more familiar with the paint. Previously, again, would have recommended it right now. Ah, you know, I would probably stay away from it to just simply because there are better options at this point in time, uh, which I have discussed on other videos. But, you know, since you're watching this one, I will hit the four main more four main brands of paint that I like to use. Um, by and large, um, Citadel, Citadel paint, Games Workshop paint is probably hands down uh, your best option. It's easy to find. It's not rel relatively, it's relatively inexpensive comparatively. Um, it comes in a fantastic arrange of, array of colors. Uh, there goes my airbrush, compressor. Um, it comes in different consistencies, so you can get everything from layered, uh, thick layered dry brushing paint all the way down to washes. The washes are phenomenal. Um, it's easy to thin down to do wet brushing with. It's easy. It's okay to run through an airbrush. They had an airbrush line of paints for a while. Uh, I think they stopped making those because I haven't seen them for a while. Uh, the airbrush line of paint was not really good. Um, it, it it didn't work really well. You can use just the regular uh, regular Games Workshop paint in an airbrush. It does need to be thinned down, thinned down, however, before you do that. Uh, again, one of the other main uh, brands of paint that I like is Tamaya Paint. Um, the 
range of realistic military colors and metallic colors is fantastic. They also make a line of uh, translucent clear paints. So there's a transparent red, transparent orange, transparent green, transparent yellow, transparent blue, a clear and a smoke. Uh, all of those are fantastic. Uh, I used a lot of those on uh, Iron Man Customs to give it that like glossy armor, wet, me wet metal look. Um, again, needs to be stirred, not shaken. Uh, you can get a, uh, air, uh, paint stir badger makes one. They're like 12 bucks on Amazon or at your local game store. Uh, highly recommend that. Uh, one of the other big brands that a lot of people use, uh, is Vallejo. Uh, again, it comes in a fantastic array of colors. One of the really cool things about Vallejo is they make sets. So I bought a set of purples, and it was probably about half a dozen different shades of purple. Uh, I also bought a metallic set. So it was about a half a different shades of different colors of, of metal. So uh, metallic purple, metallic green. Um... I don't even remember what all was in this and then like four different shades of like gunmetal from silver all the way down to really dark gunmetal. Um, and this, so the sets are really kind of, I've seen, I've seen like a wood leather set. So you can buy sets for specific projects, which is really cool. Um, I remember this Vallejo, one of my local hobby places said that they they had trouble getting Vallejo in stock a lot of times so again maybe not the be not the easiest to get a hold of certainly not as easy to get a hold of as, as game workshop stuff and then uh kind of the late comer to this and I think these guys if I if the rumors what I've heard are true uh some of the guys that worked for games workshop left games workshop and started their own company and it's called uh the army painter uh war paints and this stuff's fantastic uh again it started off in a pretty limited color selection but has grown over the last several years um they make an airbrush line of paint you can see the gold top on this this that signifies that it's an airbrush uh color uh the ones with the white are just your regular uh paints and the ones with the red top are washes. And the washes are really nice. Um, when I do flesh tones, uh, I do um, two different types of airbrushing onto the face. And then I use uh, a flesh tone and a red tone wash for that. Uh, and then they have a, a dark tone, a military tone. I don't think they're as nice as the Citadel uh, like Nolan Oil and Camo Shade uh, washes, um, but they're not bad. The kind of downside of some of these washes and even the Citadel washes is they'll dry in uh, kind of a glossy, and that's not usually the effect that I'm going for because I use washes to kind of highlight shaded areas. So those should be darker. Those should not be reflecting light. And that's one of the reasons I seal my work when I'm done. I use a sealant to knock the gloss off of the washes. Uh, <clears throat> so those are the four four big ones. Tamaya Games Workshop, Army Paint, and Vallejo. I um, think that's about all I got for this particular video. Stay away from Mr. Color. Or at least don't run it through an airbrush. That's the like too long didn't read version of that. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please do that fun social media stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. And uh, if you have suggestions for future videos, please put those in the comments below as well. I do look at those. I do try and get back to everybody. Uh, and stay tuned for a review uh, for a product called Bondic, which is a pen that draws plastic. 
that sounds really weird, um, but we have uh, our last General Geekery guest, Sean Grogan of SG Caper Customs to thank for putting us, us onto this product. I cannot wait to get this thing. It looks like a game changer. So stay tuned for that review. That will be getting here Saturday. I think I'll have it Wednesday. So I'm hoping to have a video up uh, by this time next week. And as always, thanks for watching.